Rosemary? All right. Would you like to tell them what you're going to do or sure. tell them about your life? Or? Sure, what do you want to know? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm from Vancouver, but originally from a very small town called Plum Coulee, Manitoba. And it's very close to North Dakota. And I play on a violin from 1714. This violin's nickname is Sparkle, because I love sparkly things. But it's from Paris, and it um, actually played in King Louis XIV's orchestra, if you can imagine. Oh. And uh, Carl and I wrote a song about it on my album called Priceless, which I just love that song. It was actually after I called him up, we had a mutual friend, and I, I, a friend said, are you going to go write in Nashville? And I says, I don't know anyone in Nashville. She says, well, I know the perfect person. And she introduced me to Carl Jackson. And it was right after this amazing thing happened, because this violin, I was playing a gig in, in uh, Santa Barbara a year ago. It was at the Museum of Contemporary Art. And I was leaving the gig at midnight. My friend had my violin and I had all my gear in my hand and we went to get my to get my bags from my hotel room because I had a 7 a.m. call in South Dakota. And he helped me with my bags. We went into the room for about a minute, came out, and I see my wireless box standing in front of the door. And I said, what's that doing there? He goes, where's your violin? I said, what do you mean, where's my violin? He said, I placed it right there next to your wireless. You can imagine. This is my everything. And... Um, we didn't know what to do. We called the cops, started banging on doors. We went to gas stations. We went to liquor stores. We went through dumpsters. We went through bushes. We did everything. We were sitting in the parking lot at 4 a.m. Just, I was weeping. I didn't know what else to do. And a black SUV rolls up next to me. Guy rolls down the window. He says, are you guys looking for a violin? I said, yeah, have you seen it? He said, no, but I heard about it at the gas station. He says, I have a bunch of musicians in my family and I can't imagine what you're going through. And I was like, what? So, my friend goes to him and he says, hey, can we pray about this violin? He said, absolutely. So here we are, strangers praying across this window with this fiddle. And after the prayer, the guy goes, he says, you know what, I work in the prison ministries in Santa Barbara, and I'm going to put the word on the newspaper, I'm going to put it on the TV, I'm going to put it on the radio, and I'm going to have a $2,000 cash reward for your violin and bow. I was like, is this an angel? Like, what is happening? And, you know, I got on that plane. My first stop was in Seattle. Hadn't heard anything, and I was just devastated, completely devastated. And I was about to leave, and I looked down at my phone, and I see from the hotel manager, we have found your violin. Wow. And I called her, and she was weeping about this instrument because everyone was invested in finding this. And she said a man in a black hoodie came in, disheveled looking, wasn't staying at the hotel, walked into the front door, placed my violin on the front desk and said, I hear you've been looking for this, and walked at the front door. Now, if that's not a miracle, yeah, there you go. I don't know what is. I 